we bring in Houston talk radio host Jimmy Barrett. Good to see you as always, my friend. Uh, the Washington Post reports with a headline, A Betrayal, Inside the Bitter Rift Between Pelosi and Schumer Over Border Bill. If true, how does the president exploit this to try to get something done on the border? Wow, that's a tough one, because uh, even with a ripped inside the Democratic Party, I don't see how you get them on the same page when it relates to what the real problem is, and the real problem is asylum. We're going to continue to have these types of numbers until the asylum policy changes. You can throw $4.6 billion into these detention facilities and get them resupplied, but when you've got 40,000 people a day coming in, uh, and sometimes many, many more than that, then you're just fighting a losing battle. You're, you're just trying to keep the water from sinking the boat. Do Republicans have an Achilles heel on this when you start looking at the conditions inside these facilities? We had a congresswoman on earlier, Democrat from Houston, who was talking about the conditions of infants being kept not in foster homes but in detention facilities. No, no one's perhaps questioning people's motives, but the end result is not pretty, and it seems as though the president's taking this one on the chin. Well, I think you're right about that. In this, not a, it's not something you want to see. You don't want to see small children yeah. not having a bed to sleep on. But by the same token, uh, when you've got people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who wants to walk out in protest along with the Wayfair uh, employees that don't like their company supplying beds to these ICE detention centers, what in the world are you standing for here? Don't you want these kids to have a place to sleep? Let's, let's put that money into improving those conditions, and then let's work on how we're going to deal with these really, really small children. Yeah, a AOC, among others, who voted against uh, this $4.6 uh, billion. But it, it comes back to this important political issue. The president is the president. The buck stops with him. As much as he wants to blame Congress, if these conditions continue, is it something that Democrats can uh, tie around uh, his ankle in a ball and chain and say, look, you're to blame for this. Your policies are to blame for this. This doesn't play well in suburbia. Well, I agree, but here's the problem. The, the policies go back to the Obama administration. Yeah, we had these same kinds of issues back in 2015. So to point the finger at the president for all these issues is going down the wrong path here. Uh, Congress is a problem. Uh, they have a lot of the blame in this for their failure to act. And we've got to make some improvements, obviously, with ICE and, and get them this, the materials that they need. And if they need additional training in how to deal with these families, because that's not necessarily what they're trained to do, yeah. then let's get them that as well. Yeah, we got to... Somebody from the Border Patrol coming on to talk about that very issue uh, in a minute. you got to look at everything now in the 2020 lens. And this is the debate on Thursday night. The president referenced this. We're going to watch a clip. Then let's talk about it. Okay. If you'd be so kind, raise your hand if you think it should be a civil offense rather than a crime to cross a border without documentation. <laughs> Can we keep the hands up so we could see them? And as they go through the pan, Michael Bennett's hand is down. The senator from Colorado it looked like everybody else there had their hand up. The question is this. Democrats think they are able to flip Texas. They, it's one of the states on their map. They use the better O'Rourke model from the Ted Cruz Senate race. Is the way to flip Texas answers like that and positions like that? I think if Texas flips... Uh, Leland, Texas flips just because of the change of the population. And I think that's what Democrats are counting on. I was in Virginia before I came here to I, Texas. I just want to be, I, it's important to button this down. Though. So, so you're in Texas, you're on the ground there. You think there's a reasonable chance that it does flip. That's pretty big. Well, there's a reasonable chance at some point it does flip. Does it flip in 2020? No, I don't think it flips in 2020. I think Texas, I think Texas will reelect this president. The, the, all the points are there as far as the economy doing well and, and all the other things, pocketbook issues that most people really care about. Plus, there's a lot of support for Trump that you just don't hear about. People who are hmm. afraid what a friend or neighbor or, or somebody else might say about it, so they keep quiet about it. Yeah, we, and we, I think there's we, a lot more support for Trump, just as there was in the last election, than people are willing to admit to. Yeah, there's a lot of pollsters who are uh, remodeling, shall we say, Pennsylvania, Michigan, uh, and Wisconsin.